Good morning, good morning, good morning. It is the chief himself. Today is my day. The day when I come to the beach and do absolutely nothing. Today I'm going to be spending the entire day in the city of Santa Monica. So my plan is, I come to the beach this morning. I started my journey early this morning, about six o'clock. So now it's about what? 8.30 or so about. So I'm going to spend it in Santa Monica today. Um, I'm going to have breakfast. Well, I walk in my own breakfast. I went to the supermarket yesterday and I make some shoppings so that I can have breakfast when I come to Santa Monica. Um, after which, a high protein breakfast because I'm going to do a little workout. No cheating workout, just simple, regular, um, follow the rules workout. Um, after I finish workout, I get a shower. And uh, when I finish my shower, like about uh, 11 o'clock or so, I'm going to go to the promenade and see what is happening on the promenade. Yeah, we are at the Third Street promenade. There's a, a son is taking advantage of his father. The promenade is this um, four block stretch of road where they have a lot of businesses, tourist oriented businesses. There are always people there performing. Those people get uh, a certificate from the San Luis Monica um, government and this allowed them to perform in Santa Monica on given days at given time in, the, in given locations. So there are always beautiful performances there by very talented um, musicians. After which I'm going to go to the pier. Check out the action on the pier and when I'm finished at the pier, I'm going to have an ice cream. I went and I got myself a large, it is a 1.5 quarts of ice cream. I'm going to eat every bit of it. But the unfortunate thing is, I searched my bag and I did not have a disposable spoon. So guess what? My library card becomes my spoon. I'm going to eat a tub of ice cream by myself. Remember, fasting season is coming up. And because fasting season is coming up, I have to put on a little weight. So when I start fasting, I have something to shed. So I'm going to sit back and eat a nice tub of ice cream. And after that, I'm just going to relax, probably at the city hall at one of the parks for a minute. Then I will head back to downtown LA at about what? Two o'clock or so. So that is the plan for my day. I don't know if I would have time to show you what I'm doing and when I'm doing it, but I will try to do it and I will um, make a nice video of what I did today, my workout and everything else that I do. So this is a chief taking it light, cocking up his foot as usual and just enjoying life. No slave here. No rush to do anything. Nobody's compelling me to do anything. I do what I want, when I want, how I want, for whatever purpose I want to. And that means fighting when I want to. <laughs> my people, tomorrow I'll be back on the, um, the front line where I will continue my protest, my one-man protest. And we'll prepare for the Sabbath because tomorrow is a preparation day and Saturday is a Sabbath. Have a good one, I'll see you a little later. Now that I've finished eating, right, I have my last piece of tomato here for my for mother ate. I have a Santa Monica newspaper. So while I allow my food to digest, so that energy could start percolating and I get the strength to do my workout. I'm going to sit back and read what has happened in Santa Monica for the past week and I also have the daily so I will know what happened in Santa Monica yesterday. So now it's time for me to just sit back and relax and read the newspaper, catch up on the events of Santa Monica and then I'll do my workout. So people, now that I have eaten and I have catch up
catch up with the news. My food is almost digested, so it is time for me to go and burn some calories by doing some simple exercise. Well, my people, that is my workout for today. And it's now to get time to get a shower, to get changed and go on the move. I'll talk to you later. Okay, so now I'm finished taking my shower. And now it's time for us to go to the pier instead of the, going to the promenade first, we go to the pier first because the pier is closer. So let us take a nice little walk down to the Santa Monica Pier. That is the Santa Monica Pier, pier in the distance. It's about approximately a mile and a quarter away. So we're going to take our time and walk down the boardwalk and get there. This building that you are seeing here, this is the Hotel Casa del Mar. It is a Three thousand dollars a night hotel, and if you look, it is in very close proximity of the beach, and it's just a walk away from the beach. So if you have a little three thousand dollars you want to spend for night, you can come to this one. And right next to the Casa del Mar, this is the shutters. It's a fairly big establishment. I think this is $5,000 a night. It goes across the street and there's a part of the building also up there. So this is the shutters. I just saw something interesting there. I saw two women who wants to be men walking bareback. They had surgery, you could see the surgical mark beneath their breasts to remove their breasts. And the plastic surgeon constructed the skin like if it is a man's chest. But it is flat right down to the chest bones. That was interesting. Just past me walking up the street there. People are out doing their little things. This is the Palisade Park. It is a part of the pier. The activities on the pier. There you can see a mother with her three sons being on the swing. And there is the Palisade Park. You're almost close to the, the bottom of the pier. Here is where the artists come to choose where they're going to perform for the day. When they get in the it, they go to where they're performing. And right here is the merry-go-round.
Okay, this marks the culmination of our visit to the Santa Monica Pier. You have seen what's going on down there. And there it is, you can see the pigeons are making their circle. And our next stop is Prayer. This is the Santa Monica City Hall. And this is the grounds of the Santa Monica City Hall. Across the street from the Santa Monica City Hall, you can find the Tongva Park. And beyond the hedge of trees there is the Santa Monica Superior Court. Behind the Santa Monica City Hall, you can find the Santa Monica Fire and Police Administration building. There's a very interesting story about this place. All of these lands that are now used for the administration of the Santa Monica uh, City once belonged to black people. All of, the, all of these lands held the house of black citizens of California who were living in Santa Monica. And the Santa Monica um, City Council take away their lands and kick them off the lands using eminent domain. So all of those lands over there were privately owned but they were white owned lands. Nobody interfered with those people. But the lands that were black owned, they kicked them off for it. They get rid of the black people out of Santa Monica. So now the white children can go over to the Tongva Park and ride on the slides and play in the water fountain and do all kind of thing. So now what they have done, they have just up the African Americans in little straw hats. Um, they give them a small dust broom and a dust shovel. Give them a few pamphlets to put in their pockets, a radio. They are really sanitation workers. But they give them a name, um, ambassadors, and they send them out. Tell them to keep the place clean. Um, help tourists get to their destination, and they call them ambassadors. So from, from landholders, landowners in Santa Monica to sanitation workers. My people, it is a hard day. But now it is time for me to pray. So I am going on my people's land, the Santa Monica City Hall, and here I'm going to spend the next hour talking to my father as it is my custom. I'm going to be praying for the next hour. After the, I'm finished praying, I'm going to go to the, the promenade. I'll talk to you in a while. Here we are at the Third Street Promenade. This is Monsters Museum. There is some full size chess. Okay. Yes, the son is taking that much of his father for chess.
my people, as I said, today I'm going to climax my day in Santa Monica by eating a big tub of ice cream. I'm right outside of the train station sitting. I went and I got myself a large, it is a 1.5 quarts of ice cream. I'm going to sit here before I go on the train and I'm going to eat every bit of it. The unfortunate thing is, I searched my bag and I did not have a disposable spoon. So guess what? My library card becomes my spoon right now. Let's get into it. First I take up my trusty knife and I cut the security strip off of this ice cream. Right on there. Yeah. <laughs> oh my god, I can't wait. And the first thing we have to do is you have to make sure that you don't waste any of the ice cream. So we look at the ice cream on the top of the container. Ah. Which is not much. And now what did I do with the what, what, what did I do with the library card? Oh I pressed on and I was on the on the thing. Now our library card. Mmm. Mm. I love ice cream. When I was a child, there was this man who used to come from I think it's either Lomans or St. Connor selling ice cream and he would shout, ice cream in cone. And daddy would always buy us ice cream in cone from Mr. Snoconi. Or with bread from Miss Louise. And one of the things, no matter how large an ice cream I get, it was never enough. I always wanted another one, but we were only restricted to one. Now, I don't have to find myself wanting another one. I buy a 1.5 quart of ice cream, I eat all of it, and sometimes I want more. There is only one thing that we can compare to eating ice cream, especially this flavor ice cream. I'm not going to tell you what it is. Only one thing, and that is sex. <laughs> oh my God. And guess what? I haven't had sexual intercourse in over 11 years because I'm um, practicing celibacy there are times when the temptation was overwhelming I had to go and pray hard and ask the most high God to take me through this temptation but he always take me through it and now I can still celebrate over 11 going on to 12 years since I haven't had sexual intercourse not because I couldn't have but because I choose not to have and it has been wonderful today have been a wonderful day. I enjoyed every moment of my day. From the time I woke up this morning to now that I sit here in Santa Monica outside of the train station eating my ice cream. It is days like this that you know that the Most High God really loves me and takes care of me. He provides for all of my needs and I cannot say thank you enough to the Most High God. What a lot of people don't understand is that the best thing in life are free. And the most pleasurous things are not necessarily the expensive things. I think you can hear a little tightness in my tongue because my tongue is getting frozen. <laughs> mm. Most people are of the opinion that they have to go to a fancy restaurant to impress someone to have fun. Having fun is just doing what you enjoy, eating what you like, and doing it not to accommodate or to please someone else. 
but you do it because you just enjoy it. And that is what that is how I live my life. I just do the things that I enjoy. To hell with who don't enjoy it. You will drive by and see me eating my ice cream, a big cup of ice cream or one. What the hell is it man? I am having fun. <laughs> I am halfway through. I'm halfway through. I'm getting there. <laughs> Behind me is the courtyard Marriott, and the building above is the Hampton Inn. Those are two um two hotels in Santa Monica. The stinky white men, they might have They hate to see black people having fun. I always having fun. Every day I have fun. Every day I do something interesting and important to me. You understand? I protest when I feel like I go out there. Well, I protest consistently. But it's because I want to. You understand? They are accustomed to controlling everyone. Every black man. This black man is not a slave. They can't control me. I do what I want, when I want, how I want, for what purpose I want. It is a little awkward using the library card as a spoon. Don't talk about the slaves. The slaves are going to be upset because they see me doing what they want all day. There are people all around watching me, you know. They monitor every move that I make in California. <laughs> I think one of the things, apart from just monitoring me, they think that because I am not a slave, I am dangerous. Because they can't control me, I am dangerous. They can control every other black man, but not me. And make it worse, my rhetoric, my anti-white rhetoric, Make them afraid. <laughs> I love my life. Well, people, I'm coming on to the last bit of ice cream. <clears throat> you know, the library can't come in handy for scraping the sides. I normally lose a lot of ice cream that's there on the sides. But because of the library card, I am able to scrape everything off of the side. Mm. I told them I'm not going to waste anything. Mm -mm. Mm. I am proud of myself. Now, my people, it is time to go back down to Los Angeles. I will see you on my another journey. 